What's going on guys? It's Greg here, AKA New York Prepper. In this video, we're gonna do another 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum penetration test with some two x 10 lumber. This is Douglas fir two x 10. And we got 12 two by 10s here. And we're gonna shoot at these two by 10s with the famous 700 grain hard cast bullet from Underwood Ammo. And this bullet is traveling at 1,200 feet per second. And look at how monstrous this bullet is, guys. This thing is just absolutely huge. Look at that. Look at that flat nose there. 700 grain bullet, guys. Okay? Just absolutely insane. And right next to it, I got my favorite bear load here. This is a 440 grain hard cast from buffalo bore and uh, just look at how much bigger that 700 green bullet is compared to the 440 green buffalo bore so and this 700 green 500 magnum is basically double the size of the heaviest 44 magnum bear load okay it's basically double the size of that and uh, it's just absolutely insanely huge and I've heard the recoil is really bad with this one but I guess I'll find out in a few minutes here when I start shooting. But uh, so we're going to be shooting at some 2x10s again. This is my famous 2x10 penetration test that I've done all my penetration tests with before. And this is just Douglas fir 2x10s. We're going to see how many 2x10s this 700 grain bullet can pass through. We're going to see if it's all that it's cracked up to be or is it just a gimmick. Or is it just something that you buy for fun and it's not really actually functional in the real world? We're going to compare it to some previous tests that I've done. And the best performer with this pe penetration test with the 2x10s is this 440 green hard cast. This is the best penetrator for the 500 Smith & Wesson that I have that I've ever tested. This is the Buffalo Bore 440 green hard cast bear load traveling at 1625 feet per second and uh, this is the best penetrating cartridge that I've tested for the 500 Magnum. Um, this buffalo bore penetrated through eight 2x10s okay so we're gonna see if this 700 grain bullet can do as good as the 440 grain and what we're gonna do is after the test after we shoot we're gonna pull these boards apart I screwed them all together in case any of you guys haven't seen these tests before, I screw them all together with a screw in each corner, a three inch deck screw in each corner. So this whole thing is screwed together tight. When the test is over, I unscrew all the boards. I see how many boards this bullet will, will pass through. I'm gonna see how many boards it passes through. And then we're gonna pull the bullet out of the wood and we're gonna look at it. We're gonna see if it deformed, if it kept its shape. Uh, we're going to weigh it and see how much mass it lost, how much weight it lost. We're going to see what kind of weight retention we get. Okay, and the gun we're going to be shooting this cartridge out of today is my 500 Smith & Wesson Magnum revolver from Smith & Wesson. It's an X-frame. It's a 6.5 inch barrel with ports on the top. And uh, let's get started shooting. All right guys, so I'm gonna shoot this 700 grain bullet now, and we're shooting from about five yards away, okay? So let's see what happens here.
All right, guys, so the first shot we took was a little bit high, but that's what I was planning. I'm going to try to get two or three shots in this wood. So the next shot, I'm going to be aiming in the middle. And you can see it cracked at least four boards here, so it must have penetrated at least four. I don't see a crack in the fifth one, but we'll see what happens when we take this apart. So let's take a couple more shots and get some more bullets into this wood so we can get a good, consistent result here. Wanted to show you guys how long this bullet is. It goes all the way to the front of the cylinder, almost flush with the cylinder there. Look at that, it takes up the whole cylinder. I gotta measure the overall length, but it's probably pushing two and a half inches. It's insane. All right guys, so we took two more shots and on the last shot, the impact was so strong that the front board just fell completely off. Okay, but these were our three shots right here. And uh, again, on the last shot, it just completely destroyed the wood. The impact was so massive that the wood just came apart. The screws, the screws came apart, as you can see, they popped out. One of the bullets looks like it went through uh, three boards, maybe four, and then it looks like it came out the side here, and it went out the side, and we got one perfect hit right in the middle here, and uh, this is going to be interesting to see how many boards this one went through. This is just a perfect hit right in the meat of the wood. So uh, we're going to take this back to the house. We're going to take it apart and see how many boards these 700 grain monsters penetrated through and what kind of weight retention we had. And uh, most of all, we'll see if these bullets are everything that they're cracked up to be, or are they just a gimmick? 
So stay tuned. All right, guys, so we got some pretty disappointing results for the 700 grain hard cast from Underwood Ammo. And this is not to knock Underwood Ammo. It's not their fault. It's the design of the load. It's not really optimal for penetration because the bullet is so heavy and you just can't push that bullet fast enough to really get enough penetration out of it, you know. I do wish that somebody would make a 700 grain soft point. So if anybody out there who's from Underwood Ammo or any other bullet manufacturer or cartridge maker, um, if you guys are watching this video, it would be nice if you guys could make a 700 grain soft point, a jacketed flat nose soft point. That's 700 grains. I think that would be much better than a 700 grain hard cast, okay? Because with that 700 grain hard cast, you're not able to get enough velocity with such a long bullet. The bullet just takes up too much of the powder space inside of the case. So any bullet manufacturers out there or Underwood, if you guys are watching this, I would strongly recommend that you guys look into making a 600 or 700 grain jacketed flat nose soft point. I think that would do much better. And I think with a bullet that big, if it were to mushroom, it would cause an absolutely massive wound channel. But as far as a 700 grain hard cast goes, I think it's more of a gimmick and it's more of a sales kind of thing than actual practical functionality the 440 grain hard cast pushed at around 1600 feet per second is really the best penetrating load that i've tested in wood and soft media um, so that is the golden standard for bare loads and deep penetrating Loads for the 500 Magnum is the 440 grain hard cast bullet at around 20 to 23 Brunel hardness pushed at 1600 feet per second. That's pretty much the best you're going to do from all the different bullets that I've personally tested so far. So that's the golden standard. But so the results here, we barely penetrated three 2x10s which is basically the same level of penetration as my 44 Magnum with 265 grain monolithic metal uh, bullets out of my snub nose 44 magnum and the actually the 44 magnum with 305 grain hard casts penetrates one board more than these 700 grain hard casts out of the 500 smith and wesson so i found that to be pretty interesting that this actually penetrated less than a 44 magnum with 300 grain hard casts, okay? Um, and if you want to go back and watch some of my 44 Magnum penetration tests, I'll attach a link up above so you guys can watch them. But the 44 Magnum with 305 grain hard casts is pushed at around 1300 feet per second, is able to penetrate four 2x10s, and here we barely penetrated three, okay? So it's pretty disappointing, and again, if they made this bullet a soft point, I think it would be much better and more useful than having it a hard cast, okay? Because with that soft point, that 700 grain bullet is going to create a massive mushroom and wound channel from the massive amount of expansion of all that lead. Um, but this just doesn't cut it for me for bare defense. Um, I would stick with the 440 grain hard cast. I think that's much better. Or a 400 grain mono metal from Lehigh Defense pushed to around 1600 feet per second. Um, the extreme penetrators also do pretty well. The 350 grain extreme penetrator and 420 grain extreme penetrator can penetrate about six two by tens, which is really good. Um, so those would be my recommended bullets of choice for bear defense, but definitely stay away from the 700 grain uh, bullet. If you're thinking about saving your life from a dangerous animal, 
I just don't think that it has enough velocity. Um, one thing to remember is that printed velocity on the box, 1,200 feet per second, that's for a 10 and a half inch test barrel. So Underwood Ammo tests their 500 Smith & Wesson ammo out of a 10 and a half inch test barrel. So they're getting 1,200 feet per second out of a 10 and a half inch barrel. I have a six and a half inch barrel. So I'm probably getting closer to 1,100 feet per second with that 700 grain load. So, uh, you know, it's just not enough velocity, really. Um, you know, if you could push this bullet to 14 or 1,500 feet per second, then, you know, you'd get outstanding penetration. But 1,100 feet per second with such a heavy bullet, it's just not not enough velocity, unfortunately. But for shooting things and having fun and shooting stuff around the house, just, you know, blowing up cinder blocks and stuff like that it's definitely fun but for practical real world use it it's not really that great um again it, it's barely uh reaching the same level as a 44 magnum with good bear loads okay so but i thought i would do this test to see if it's everything it's cracked up to be and i think it's more of a gimmick than than you know anything that's really practical so i'm going to go through this board by board show you guys every single board and then we're going to pull the bullets out we're going to measure them we're going to take a look at them to see what kind of weight retention they they had and we're also going to look at uh whether they maintain their shape or whether they deformed and stuff like that so we'll do that at the end of the video so here's the first board and these were my three shots my first shot was here my second shot was here and this was my last shot and the shot that I took here on the left it actually veered off and and went out the side and um, I'll show you guys that in a second so this is the first board okay you can see those big exit holes I will say that this 700 grain with that super flat nose that has no ogive at all it's just a perfect cylinder it creates some pretty devastating wound channels for a hard cast bullet. I will say that it, it creates a much larger uh, wound channel in the wood compared to the 440 grain hard casts. And that's because the nose is completely flat. There's not even a single uh, degree of ogive at all. Like even the 440 grain hard casts have a little bit of ogive. They have a little bit of a curvature before you get to the meat plat. The meat plat is the nose. There's even a slight amount of curvature, but these are just perfect cylinders. Um, and I think that that uh, causes a larger wound channel. Look at these big exit holes here in the wood. And here's my finger just for comparison. You're probably looking at a, a one inch exit hole here in this wood. Okay, so that's board number one. Here's board number two. Look at this massive hole here. So it does create big holes. I will give it that. Um, I mean, anything you're going to shoot with this gun, they're going to feel it. Um, you know, that 700 grain bullet just creates a massive amount of um, impact when it hits stuff, you know. And um, there's a lot of difference between energy and, and knockdown power. And a lot of guys don't understand that you can have a bullet that actually has lower muzzle energy, but has more knockdown power, you know, and this is a classic example because the bullet is so heavy, and even though it may have a little bit less energy than a lighter bullet pushed at a higher velocity, the bullet is just so massive, it's like getting hit with a sledgehammer, you know, so it's basically the difference between getting hit by a, a slow a slow sledgehammer or getting hit by a really fast uh, roofing hammer, you know, and obviously even if I if I were to hit you with a roofing hammer and I was to swing it as hard as as Superman, you know, let's say I'm Superman and I swing a, a roofing hammer at you um, compared to let's say a sledgehammer, uh, the sledgehammer even though it's going to be swinging a little bit slower, it's it's heavier and it creates more knockdown power, so even though it doesn't penetrate as well as other 500 magnum loads, there's no doubt that the 700 grain bullet is going to have some no serious knockdown power. Uh, that massive amount of lead when it hits a living animal, it's gonna that animal's gonna gonna feel it. You know, uh, it's not like 
it's not like it's going to be able to just walk it off right away. Um, and just look at this massive hole here. This is my finger compared to the hole here. And this is probably, I would say, about a one inch diameter, maybe, maybe even uh, an inch and a half diameter hole here. Okay, so it left a massive hole, as you can see. Um, and then this was the shot on the side and you could see the how it just ripped through the wood here that giant meat plat just ripped right through the wood and it veered off the side and it went off the side so this is the second board okay now we're moving on to the third board and this is where things start to get interesting so this is the third board here okay you can still see these big holes here and uh, this is where that that one bullet veered off and went off the side and I'll show you guys that in a second here but this is the third board and I'll show you the bullets here that are lodged basically at the very end of the third board okay here's one this was my best shot right in the middle and you could see that this bullet is basically just barely hanging off you know you could see it's basically just barely hanging off the edge okay of the third board so I'm gonna say that this bullet can penetrate three two by tens and then here we have another one all right this was the other shot right here and uh you can see this one's kind of kind of you know halfway through the third board so i'm going to go with three boards all right the 700 grain hard cast from underwood ammo could penetrate three two by tens douglas for two by tens and um so that's that's the conclusion of the test so far and so here's the final board here's the fourth board and uh, you can see these big dents in the wood okay look at this big dent here it's absolutely massive dent you know this is like a two inch long dent here look at that dent in the wood right there okay um, it actually hit the wood with so much energy that it split the wood okay look at that even though it didn't actually penetrate the the force was so strong it left this huge dent and uh it split the wood i mean that's a lot of energy to leave this kind of a, a dent in the wood and um and then here's the 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 bullet that skipped off the side okay let me see if i can show you guys that um so the bullet that skipped off the side the the second shot that I took, this is the third board and this is the fourth board. So the bullet passed through the third board and it skipped off the side of the fourth board. Okay, you can see right there where it skipped out the side. All right. Um, so we're going to say that the 700 grain hard cast can penetrate through three 2 by 10s um, So, you know, not the best, I would say. You know, that's, again, on par with a... 44 magnum uh and obviously the 44 magnum can get the job done when it comes to bears but if we're talking about big grizzly bears you need maximum penetration and to achieve that penetration you need a good balance between bullet weight and velocity you don't want the velocity to be too high but you don't want it to be too slow um, either one of those will decrease penetration if velocity is too high penetration goes down if velocity is too low penetration goes down so you want it to be somewhere in the middle um, and that's the reason why this particular bullet is not as effective as people think because the velocity is too low and I think that you're much better off going with a bullet that's between 350 and 450 grains with the 500 magnum that tends to be the sweet spot for the 500 Magnum in terms of penetration, um, all the bullets that I've tested between 350 and 450 grains had ex excellent penetration. But I notice once you go above 450 grains, that's when the penetration starts to go down because the bullets are so heavy and the velocity is just too low. So I'm going to pull these bullets out of the wood and I'm going to weigh them for you guys. We're going to see how much weight they retained. We're going to look at the shape of the nose and the bullet to see how it deformed. So stay tuned.
Now, another thing that's concerning about these 700 grain bullets is that they were not in a nose forward position. So even though they penetrated through three boards, they weren't in a nose forward position. Okay, they were in a vertical position like this, as you can see. And that's really bad. That means that the bullet was starting to tumble. And inside of live tissue, this bullet would start to tumble. And, uh, you know, it could affect the straight line penetration in a real living animal okay um but we're gonna weigh this and we're gonna take some measurements and take a look at the bullet and that'll tell us a little bit more about what's going on here so stay tuned all right guys so i pulled the bullets out of the wood and you can see some pretty interesting results here if you look at the nose of the bullets you could see that the noses were smeared and flattened out and this shouldn't really happen with a hard cast bullet um, a hard cast bullet that's properly heat treated and is at an appropriate level of hardness should not have a mushrooming nose okay and so I don't know if these bullets are heat treated or not um, but I do know that on Underwood's website, they state that these are a Brunel hardness of 21. And with a Brunel hardness of 21, you shouldn't see a massive amount of deformation like you do with these bullets here. I mean, look at this. Look at this mushroom here on this hard cast bullet. Okay, look at how it mushroomed up. And so now I'm starting to think that it's not so much the slow velocity of these bullets as much as it is the softness of these bullets that is also reducing the penetration depth. And so I want to get more information for you guys, but the best amount of the best information I could find is on Underwood's website, which says that these are cast to a Brunel hardness of 21. And with a Brunel hardness of 21, you should not see this type of uh, mushrooming going on with these hard cast bullets. And so I think that had a huge impact on the penetration depth as well as the slower velocity. Now, um, some of the other Underwood bullets that I've shot, um, specifically the 44 Magnum 305 grain hard cast, is also cast to a 21 Brunel hardness. But the 44 Magnum doesn't deform like this. The 44 Magnum stays a perfect cylinder and has zero deformation. So this is really not good. Um, you know, obviously this expansion here would do a lot of damage inside of a living creature, okay? But it's going to reduce the penetration depth. So I was a little bit disappointed uh, by these results here with the 700 grain bullet. Um, I mean, they should not mushroom up like this, but if you guys are looking for a quasi soft point bullet, um, this could be an option for you. Um, you know, this would be a good hunting bullet for maybe a moderate sized game animal. I would not trust my life to this bullet for brown bear defense and large black bears. Um, just because as you see, the nose got totally flattened out. And um, that's not good when we're talking about being able to smash through bones and get to vital areas. You know, you can clearly see that, you know, if wood is going to do this to this bullet here, imagine what bone would do, okay? This bullet would not be able to smash through bone. It would get lodged in the bone because it would flatten out, okay? You could see the nose is just totally flattened out and smeared. So that's really, really uh, disappointing so I hope that they figure out, you know, what's going on with these bullets because they should not be flattening out like that, okay? So I want to take some measurements. This is my Frankfurt Arsenal caliper, and we're going to just measure the nose of these bullets here and show you guys how much they expanded. And again, with a hard cast bullet, you should have zero expansion. Um, so here we have 0.98. I don't know if you guys can see that, 0.98 inches. So this expanded to almost an inch in diameter, basically double the size of the bullet because it's a 0.501 diameter bullet. And 
it expanded to one inch so that's a lot of expansion guys for a a hard cast bullet that's supposed to be hard it should not have that much expansion all right that's really uh disappointing with these 700 grain bullets okay so my advice to you guys is if you want to buy these just for having them as a novelty item and you can brag about it to your friends that you have a 700 grain bullet in your pistol and that you can and you know you should take them out to the range and shoot it just so you can tell people I shot a 700 grain bullet out of a pistol but that's pretty much all they're good for you know Th these are not really serious uh bare defense loads you could use them for hunting for sure, um, hunting non-dangerous game like maybe elk or deer or moose. They would work fine, but I would not trust my life to these bullets. Uh, there's just much better options out there. Here we have the other one that expanded to just about three quarters of an inch. So that's a lot of expansion for a hard cast bullet. So now what we're going to do is we're going to zero out my reloading scale here. And we're going to weigh these bullets to see what kind of weight retention we got with them. I assume that they're going to be pretty close to 100% weight retention. I'm just zeroing out the scale. So we have it zeroed out now and we'll just test it. Uh, so this is a 100 gram weight. So it's just about right. And we're going to switch over to grains now. So we're going to weigh the first one here, which is the one that expanded to three quarters of an inch. We got 650 grains on this one. Just going to lift it up and do it again just to get a couple of different measurements. All right, so 650 grains, so it lost 50 grains of lead. And then here's the other one that expanded to one inch. And that one actually retained more weight, 663 grains. Okay, so interesting results, guys. Um, you know, not what I expected. I mean, I kind of expected that they wouldn't penetrate that deep just because they're so heavy and it's a low velocity. But I was disappointed to see this level of, of uh, flattening out of the nose on a hard cast bullet. You should not see that. That's not something that's good. So, uh, so if anybody out there from Underwood Ammo is watching this, I'd be curious to know why these bullets flattened out like this and um you know i'm pretty curious about why this happened if they they have a brunel hardness of 21 they shouldn't flatten out like that so but that's pretty much it for this video guys thanks for watching take care god bless and don't forget the three p's prepare practice and persevere